I'm going to draw two pictures on the board here. One's going to be very familiar to you. It's a physics 20 picture. We've got a car at the top of a hill at rest. Let's say the height of the hill is 10 meters. We want to find the speed of this car when it reaches the bottom of the hill. How do we do that? Think back to your physics 20 days. How would we find the speed of this car when it reached the bottom of the hill? We've done this probably a couple dozen times. We're going to say that the energy at the top of this hill is equal to the energy at the bottom of this hill. In other words, we're going to say EI is equal to EF, or EA is equal to EB, or E1 is equal to E2. The bottom line is the energy at the top of the hill is equal to the energy at the bottom of the hill. Now, what kind of energy does this car have at the top of the hill? Potential. Potential energy, MGH, because it has a height. Does it have kinetic energy at the top of the hill? It does not because it's at rest, right? So it's just potential energy at the top of the hill. What kind of energy would it have when it reaches the bottom of the hill? Kinetic energy because it's moving. Does it have potential energy when it gets to the bottom? No, it's just kinetic energy, 1 half MVF squared. We would solve for VF, right? Easy, right? Physics 20 problem, it's been a while since we've done that, but it should be coming back to you now, hopefully. We did a bunch of these problems, and by and large, you guys were pretty good at solving these problems. I know that on my final exam, there was a question involving this, and my students did very well on it, and I suspect that Mr. Coderres did as well. Now, I want to draw another diagram here. This time we've got two charged plates. We'll make the top plate positive and the bottom plate negative. We'll introduce a positive charge near the positive plate, initial speed of zero meters per second. What happens to this car as I set it in motion down the hill? It speeds up. What happens to this charged particle as I set it in motion near the positive plate? It speeds up. It gets repelled by the top plate and gets attracted to the bottom plate. It speeds up, like the car speeds up as it goes down the hill. What if we want to find the speed when it reaches the bottom plate? Exactly. We're going to deal with this in the same way as we dealt with the car going down the hill. We're going to say EI is equal to EF. Here's what I want you to do. Picture this as a car. Picture this as a car going down a hill. Why? Well, because the car going down a hill speeds up. When the charged particle goes from the positive plate to the negative plate, it speeds up. If the car speeds up, then it must have had potential energy at the beginning. If the charged particle speeds up, then it has to have potential energy at the beginning as well. Think of it as the car going down the hill. Jake, are you picturing this right now? Are you picturing the car going down a hill? Can you see it? Yeah, picture okay, this as this. You're, you can't visualize the charged particle accelerating as easily as you can picture the car going down a hill. So visualize the car going down a hill. Jacob, what color is the car? Blue car, how many people inside? One. What music are you listening to? You want to picture the details of this car going down the hill. What kind of energy does the car have, this car have, at the top of the hill? Potential energy. What kind of energy does this car have when it reaches the bottom of the hill? It has kinetic energy. But of course, we're not really talking about a car speeding up going down a hill. We're really talking about a charged particle speeding up as it goes across two parallel plates. So what we're going to do is think of it as the car speeding up and then simply replace MGH, gravitational potential energy, with Q times big V, electric potential. which is not gravitational potential energy, but rather electric potential energy. Remember, QE is electric force. QV is potential energy. We can't visualize very well the second scenario taking place. We can visualize the first scenario. So what we do is change our second scenario of a charged particle speeding up into something that's more familiar to us. That is the car going down a hill. We can see that. We know the car at the top of the hill has gravitational potential energy. We know when it gets to the bottom, it has kinetic. So we, we picture it that way. We write it down that way. And then we simply replace MGH with QV every time we see it. Now, let's make it just a little bit harder. We'll take it to that next step. 
instead of this car being at rest at the top of the hill, now let's say this car is initially moving at 10 meters per second. It's still going to go down the hill, and it's still going to speed up as it goes down the hill. What kind of energy does it have now at the beginning? Kinet it's got kinetic and potential energy, right? It's got potential energy still because it's got potential to go down the hill, but it's got kinetic energy because it's moving at the beginning. What kind does it have when it gets to the bottom of the hill? Just kinetic. Okay, we can do that. We did that in physics 20 watts, and we did a good job at it. Now, picture this one over here, the second diagram, now where the charged particle has an initial speed of 10 meters per second. What kind of energy does the car, sorry, does the car have, right, we're picturing it as a car going down a hill because it's speeding up. What kind of energy does this car, car number two, have as it's at the top of the hill? It's got potential energy, mgh initial, plus kinetic energy, one-half mvi squared. Except we're going to replace mgh, potential energy, with qv electric potential energy. So instead of being mgh plus 1 half mv squared, it's qv plus 1 half mv squared. What kind does it have when it reaches the bottom of the hill? Well, this car has no potential to fall anymore. It's just moving, so it's going to have kinetic energy at the bottom of the hill. Okay, let's go one step further. Let's say now, let's say now we want to find the speed of this car halfway down the hill. What kind of energy does the car have at the top of the hill? Both. Potential energy, mgh, plus kinetic energy because it's moving. What kind does it have when it reaches halfway down the hill? Both because it's still got height and it's moving. So we're going to say it's mgh f plus 1 half mvf Square. We solve for VF there. Okay, what about this one? Let's say we want to find the speed of this charged particle when it gets halfway across the gap. Halfway across the gap, by the way, where the potential difference is 10 volts. Remember we said a while ago potential difference is like height? It's height that drives a car down a hill. It's potential, electric potential difference that drives an electron or a proton from plate to plate. What kind of energy does the car have? This car number two, we use that term figuratively, right? It's not a car, it's a charged particle, but we picture it as a car. What kind of energy does the car have at the top of the hill? Kinetic energy and potential. What kind does it have when it's reached a point halfway across the gap. It's like going halfway down the hill, right? Tim, what kind of energy does it have now halfway down the hill? Potential and kinetic energy. So for VF. But what do we got to do here? It's not an MGH potential, right? We pictured it as MGH because we pictured it as a car going down a hill. Really, it's electric potential energy, QV. We can do that, right? We can do those physics 20 problems with cars going down hills. So why can't we do a charged particle accelerating? I want you every time for the rest of this year when you see a, a problem involving a charged particle speeding up, I want you to think of it as a car going down a hill. And I want you to write it out like a car going down a hill. And then I want you to substitute QV wherever you put in MGH. And you're going to nail it every time you do that. I want to show you one more diagram here. Let's say now the car isn't going down the hill. Let's say the car is going up the hill with an initial speed of 10 meters per second. When it reaches the top of the hill here, it stops because it barely makes it to the top of the hill. What happens to the car as it goes up the hill? 
slows down, right? What's the energy conversion taking place here? Kinds of get at the bottom. Kinetic energy at the bottom. So it's going to be 1 half mv squared is equal to the initial energy. What kind does it have at the top? It stops when it gets to the top because it's barely made it. No, nope, not zero. When it gets to the top, it has potential to fall. Therefore, it has potential energy, right? So instead of being potential to kinetic, it's kinetic to potential energy. Let's draw the second diagram a little bit differently. Here's a positive plate. Here's a negative plate. Let's put a negative particle right there with an initial speed of 10. And let's say when it gets to the other side, it stops. So this charged particle is not speeding up. This particle is slowing down as it goes to the right. That's like a car not going up down the hill like this. That's like a car going up the hill. Picture this charged particle slowing down as a car going up the hill. What kind of energy does the car have at the bottom of the hill? Kinetic energy. What kind of energy does the car have at the top of the hill when it stops? Potential energy. Except, of course, it's not gravitational potential energy. It's electric potential energy. Car, uh, charged particle speeds up, car goes down a hill, potentially kinetic. Charged particle slows down, that's like a car going up the hill. That's kinetic to potential. Here's a little summary page of what happens to the energy here, okay? Charged particle, sorry, a car going down the hill in its first situation, okay, versus a charged particle speeding up across a potential difference. What decreases? In both cases, what goes down? Potential energy. We lose potential energy in both cases. In the left side, it's MGH potential decreases. In the right side, it's QV potential decreases. But it's potential energy in both cases that's decreasing. When something speeds up, potential energy goes down. What's going to increase in both cases? What are we going to gain in both cases? Kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is kinetic energy. It's 1 half mv squared in the left side, and it's 1 half mv squared over here as well. doesn't matter what the scale, kinetic energy is kinetic energy. Potential energy goes down as you go down the hill, as you speed up. Kinetic energy goes up as you speed up, both cases. What energy doesn't change when you go down that hill? The total mechanical energy, yeah, the total energy doesn't change. So kinetic will increase or decrease depending upon whether you're going up or down. Potential will increase or decrease depending upon whether you're going up or down. But the total energy, when you add the kinetic and potential together, remains the same. And that's why EI is equal to EF, because the total energy remains the same. So once again, whenever you see from now on, whenever you see a charged particle speeding up, picture the car going down a hill. Whenever you see a charged particle slowing down, picture the car going up the hill. Solve it as a physics 20 problem, and then just replace MGH with QV. And it, it really does become easier, because we can see. Like everything we did in physics 20, we could visualize, right? It was so big, real-world scale. Physics 30 is starting to become a little bit more abstract now. When we can make it feel like something from physics 20, that makes it easier. OK, we're going to do one example, and then we're going to pack it up. Example is 1A. I don't even want to do B right now, just 1A. It says an electron is released at a speed of 1.0 times 10 to the 5 meters per second at a negatively charged plate. Let's cover up the rest for a second. Okay, you can see the rest on your sheet. But pretend you can only read that part that I have uncovered right there. What's going to happen to this electron if it's released? A negative electron released at a negative plate. It's repelled by the negative plate, right? So what's going to happen to that electron? 
It's going to speed up. That's like a car doing what? Going down a hill. All right. Now it goes on to tell us in this question that it does accelerate, but they didn't need to tell me that. I, I could determine that it accelerated, that it sped up by the nature of that first line there. Speeds up. There's a potential difference of 20 volts, 30 centimeters apart. We want to know how fast the electron is moving when it's gone halfway across the gap between the plates. This is like a car going down a hill. At the top of the hill, what kind of energy does the car have? As the car speeds up going down a hill, what kind does it have at the top of the hill? Potential energy. Because it's going to speed up as it goes down the hill, so it must start off with potential energy. Does it have anything else? Does it have anything else? Kinetic energy, because it's moving at the top of that first hill. What kind of energy does the car have when it's reached halfway down the hill? Both. It's got potential energy plus kinetic energy. Now we have less potential, more kinetic, but the total still ends up being the total. We've got to sub in, instead of MGH, we get a sub in QV for that, right? Electric potential instead of gravitational potential. Charge of the electron, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. What's VI? The initial potential. The height of the, the, height of the hill is 20 meters, let's say. What's the initial potential? 20 volts. Okay, 20 volts is my initial potential, plus one half of the mass of an electron times VI is 1 times 10 to the 5. Don't forget to square that. Oh, what's the final potential? If it's gone halfway across the gap, the final potential would be, you got this, if I started at a height of 20 meters and I went halfway down the hill, what's my height? 10 meters. If I started with a potential difference of 20 volts and I've gone halfway across, what's my new potential? 10. Does that make sense? Yeah, just because of time, I'm not going to go through the algebra of this, but make sure that you can get the answer to this question. Good Works out to be 1.9 times 10 to the 6 meters per second.